is Penn State any good this year? Penn State, so far, is 3-0 on the season, has wins over Indiana, Northwestern, and recently Wisconsin in a midweek duel. They, they're they crushing the competition. I mean, maybe, depending on your point of view, but Indiana, they beat 24-15, to Northwestern 29-13, to and Wisconsin, they basically blanked 34-6. to That six points was given up by Penn State's 125-pounder. So, my question of the day, the question of the show, my question of the day, is, is Penn State any good this year? And please leave a comment. If you're not on YouTube, head on over to YouTube, drop a comment. But on YouTube, or, yeah, drop a comment. So, is Penn State any good this year? Let's look at their lineup and how things have been going for the Nittany Lions. So this is Penn State's lineup here. Uh, if you see on YouTube, I have up the graphic. I'll be discussing this depth or this weight kind of, or these this lineup kind of in depth here, going through each weight, talking about why there are question marks at 125 and 149, and maybe even 197, because there are a couple of question marks. There are some guys at Penn State that are looking really good, and some guys that I don't know. I don't know how Penn State's going to perform. So let's talk about that. And I will be giving you a kind of a definitive answer on whether I think Penn State is good this year. And I know you're dying to hear my answer because I, I am a Penn Stater. I, I graduated from Penn State, w- watched all the Penn State wrestling matches. I, I constantly cheer for Penn State. But to be honest with you, I'm just a fan of watching great wrestling. And is Penn State going to bring great wrestling this year in the duel? So at 125 pounds is a question mark. It, so far, Penn State has not traveled with a 125 pounder and thus continues the Penn State 125 pounds curse I know some people really dislike when I say that but the truth is the weed has been kind of cursed in the last couple of years it has been between Nick Soriano and Gavin Teasdale and not really having a starter since Nico Megalutis back in the day I mean it's been tough for Penn State 125 pounds maybe Robert Howard can bump in there but so far Penn State's giving up six points they've given up six points every single duel against Wisconsin, Northwestern, uh, Indiana. We'll see what happens as the season progresses. So 133, this is this is the exciting one. RBY, Big Ten finalist, it had a, kind of a slow start to the season. And I'm going to give Penn State the benefit of the doubt when I say that they did have a slow start. However, they were off two weeks of training due to the virus due to being shut down and, and not having training going on. He did have a pin over Northwestern. And that was super exciting to watch. I mean, he it was, it was basically a tech pin where he, he teched Northwestern's guy and then ended up pinning him. Uh, and, and he was just, I mean, watching RBY, his footwork, and just how quick how quick the guy is. So exciting to watch him. The all He did All-American in his freshman year, and Penn State is returning with a couple All-Americans. Uh, he placed eighth. And I know a lot of people expect him to potentially place higher than that this year. His upcoming DeSanto match will be the interesting one to watch because, as you know, of course, they did have quite the interesting matchup the last time that DeSanto and RBY wrestled, of course, uh, with the controversial call there. The next the next weight at 141 pounds, another undefeated guy, actually two undefeated guys here at 141 for the Nittany Lions. And who are those guys? Well... You have Nick Lee. You have Nick Lee, uh, as well as Bo Bartlett. So Nick Lee, I, I want to discuss him first. So he is, has a hundred percent bonus point on the year so far. He's two tech falls in a major decision. He's on pace with last year. He's a two-time All-American, placing fifth and fifth. And I mean. It, like I said, he's on pace with last year with his bonus point. Nick Lee's bonus point percentage has just gone through the roof last year. I mean, at one point last year, I think it was, it was like 90%. Like He had bonus almost every single guy. He had scored so many darn points throughout the season. And his upcoming Ironman match should be super interesting because he does have a loss to Ironman where he was majored just a couple of years ago in 2018. Now, since then, Nick Lee has made... Great strides, and I mean, just great, great strides. I don't expect that to happen again, but he, he did look good. Bo Bartlett also weighed in at 141, wrestled mostly extra matches uh, against Wisconsin. The question here is, the, will the four times national preps champ, will he bump up, or will he stay at 141 and stay behind Nick Lee? That's going to be the question here. So 149 
What's going? What the heck is going on at 149 pounds for Penn State? For Clearin, Bearclaw, and Gardner, these are your three potential starters. Could we see more? These three have each started a duel this season. It seems like Kale is trying to see who is the best wrestler here, and that's that's actually what a lot of coaches have been doing. So don't overlook this so much and thinking that it's the something weirds going on here. Kale has, or every team is doing this and trying to find out who is the best guy, who is the best guy at the spot because there are no open tournaments. Remember that. No open tournaments this year. So they have to wrestle with different guys in different duels, extra matches. That's why it's happening. So, Verclaren is 0-1. He lost against Indiana. Lost 4-2 to against Graham Rooks. And I think that's, you know, Verclaren had a solid season last year. 17-18. Didn't perform anything crazy. He placed ninth in the Big Ten, so kind of an underwhelming performance. And I think once he had that loss to start out the season, even though, again, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, and maybe Kale does still think he's the best guy, but because he had no training the last couple of weeks, I mean, he's probably doing something, but, you know, no official training on the mat. Terrell Bearclaw, 2-1 and one so far. The redshirt freshman started against Northwestern. Bearclaw, the four-time Utah State champ, wrestled in a couple of the Nittany Line Wrestling Club events so far this uh, this past year. Bearclaw was 18-4 and four last year, so a good season, but he did have a loss against Yaya Thomas this year, 3-2, and two. and in extra matches, he is 2-0. So Bearclaw is a good choice, but then there's Luke Gardner, the 3-0 senior who did wrestle a few matches over the last couple of years, didn't really wrestle full season. Sometimes Kel threw him into the lineup. Sometimes he wrestled a match here and there against like an American, but in, in a couple open tournaments, but really hasn't started for the Nittany Lions at 149. He did start against Wisconsin and got a 7-5 sudden victory win over Drew Sharonbrock. And this is going to be a tough wait for Penn State to decide because upcoming is Max Murin and Sammy Sasso. And how... Who is going to be the best? Is it Verclaren? Is it Bearclaw? Is it Gardner? I think Kale may end up going with the senior, the veteran senior, Luke Gardner. He's undefeated so far this year. Has been looking potentially the best. I'm interested in seeing how that goes. And now that brings us to 157 pounds with Brady Berge is back. Just majored Garrett Model of Wisconsin. And he looks like himself. He looks back to himself. He was injured last couple seasons. Returned last year, lost to Quinn Kenner of Ohio State, and didn't didn't look his peak. He, he like he just didn't look his peak. He made the round of sixteen in his redshirt freshman year, and his upcoming challenge is going to be Caleb Young. Like I said, Bergie is looking back to himself, and he was supposed. To, I mean, he's supposed to be the solid guy at one hundred fifty seven pounds. But this upcoming match is going to be the deciding factor on just how good is he. Well, Caleb Young. Major and Willie Pennant, like, what's going to happen with Bergie? I, I think it's going to be a close match against Iowa. Joe Lee, undefeated, 2-0. Major decision. No major wins yet, though. Against Iowa, he could face Alex Marinelli. Now, if he loses to Marinelli, I'm not going to say, oh, that's the end. Like, Alex Marinelli is a top dog this year for I, for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He's, got, he's a tough wrestler. Now, he may not actually even wrestle Marinelli, who's been out so far this year. A couple of matches be due to uh, due to the virus. The redshirt freshman Joe Lee is four in fourteen and two, was fourteen and two last year actually, and where he did have a win over Jake Wenzel, but at the scuffle where he did place fifth, he had lost to Thomas Bullard and Travis Whitlake, who are two forces to reckon with at one sixty five, and one sixty five is one of the toughest weights this year, if not the toughest. What do you think is the toughest weight? Then 174. There's a lot to discuss at 174 pounds. So, Carter Sirachi, 3-1 and one on the season, started, lost to Donnell Washington of Indiana. He got headlocked in the first 30 seconds, got turned, taken down and turned again in the first, was down 10-1, ended up coming back, and not quite, he didn't quite get enough. I think the final score was like 10-9, but got some back points of a tilt. Now he has he he came back from there had three wins uh, including I believe an extra match, Sirachi had. But as I discussed in my video from the other day, Sirachi can still come back. I don't think that one big loss, or I shouldn't even say big loss. He he had, a, he had an upsetting loss, and we don't know one. We don't know how good Donnell Washington is going to be. Carter Sirachi just kind of been hyped up. You know he's a top ranked recruit. He's looking good at the Nittany Line Wrestling Club events. State champ from PA, he could have he he still can be very good, and 
it's let's let the season pan out, you know? Mark Hall lost his first duel for Penn State. Vincenzo Joseph lost his first duel. I was there for that one. A crazy, crazy match he had there. But let's not count Sirachi out yet. Like, anybody saying, that, oh, he he's overrated, this and that. Like, let's just see it pan out. 184 pounds, Aaron Brooks. Aaron Brooks is looking better than ever. Oh, my goodness. A major decision over Chris Weiler, who he beat last year pretty good, but just by a decision. And I was talking with some people earlier, and, like, the thing with this past year and, and since February is, as a wrestler, you were either, either making improvements or you were falling behind, right? And, and maybe that seems too question like, yeah, of course, too obvious. Like, of course, you're either making improvements or falling behind. But it's a big, it was the gap only widens with a lot of these guys. They found ways to get better, even during the most difficult times. And that's just what Aaron Brooks looks to have done. He has wins over Chris Weiler, like I just said, Zach Bronigal, Max Lyon of Purdue, and Taylor Venz. I'm excited to see how he's going to compete against these other guys at 184 pounds, which is a super interesting weight. Can't wait to see, but Aaron Brooks has me excited. I think he actually... Probably looked the best out of any of the Nittany Lions so far this season. Two more weights, and then I'll get to the real questions of Penn State and the the answer of, are they good? And so far, it seems like, yeah, they're actually pretty good this year. So, or, or maybe they aren't. Maybe you're taking what I'm saying and thinking they're not that good. So, Michael Beard at 197 is undefeated, 1-0 right now. Started against Wisconsin. Didn't start the first two, two duels of the year for whatever reason, but... He started against Wisconsin, Tech Falls Salem, uh, National Preps champ coming from Malvern Prep. Uh, is is another question mark for Penn State and how he's going to do. You know, young guys for Penn State, how are they going to perform? In recent history, they've performed well at NCAA's, but that doesn't always translate every single year. Michael Beer's looking good, though. Donovan Ball and Levko Higgins actually also started for Penn State in each duels. Unfortunately, each of those guys lost. Ball lost to Lucas Davison by major decision. Not, not a crazy loss. I think Lucas Davison's a tough guy at 197. And then Higgins lost to Indiana. But I think Beard's going to end up being the guy here. I don't know. I I don't know exactly why Beard was out that first duel of the season, but... I think Kale has reason for that. So that's 197. And then Seth Nevels at 285 pounds, 3 and 0, is looking good too. So unfortunately, Greg Kirkfleet doesn't look to be in this season. I know a lot of fans were excited for him, the number one recruit in his recruiting class, the transfer, or not, not necessarily transfer, but my guess transfer from Ohio State to Penn State. And we're excited to see how he's going to do at heavyweight, especially with training in the room with guys like uh, Kyle Snyder. Uh, hello, that's going to be a tough guy to be training in the room with, but so is Seth Nevels, and, and as well as like an Anthony Cassiope, NCAA champ, heavyweight. So Seth Nevels started the season with a fall, a tech fall, in the first weekend. Now, he did wrestle against Wisconsin, and he didn't wrestle Hilger. Hilger did not wrestle in that duel, but he did beat Peter Christensen. Uh, he was 13-4 and last year, where he did also have a loss to Cassiope. Now, he did have a win over Luke Luffman of Illinois, and Luffman is somebody who has been looking just solid this season. So, although like Cassiope kind of handled Luffman, I, I do think it's impressive that Nevels d- does have a win over Luffman, especially with the, the improvements he's been making. And I, I think Seth Nevels has been looking better than last year. Time will only tell. And then the questions for Penn State. So, the Penn State lineup is it looks to be set for the most part. However, there are still a few questions. Like I said, 125, will the curse continue? Will we get a 125-pounder? <laughs> Who will start at 149 pounds? Will it be Verclaren, Bearclaw? Will it be Gardner? And will Beard continue through the rest of the season at 197? My guess for that last one is yes. But are, is Penn State any good? My answer to this goes like this. Penn State is returning two All-Americans in RBY, and Nick Lee. Two All-Americans. A lot of teams aren't even returning one. And a lot of programs don't even have one All-American. They were returning five national qualifiers. But, of course, those two, RBY and Nick Lee. But for Clearin, Brady Berge, and Aaron Brooks. They are already distancing themselves, a lot of these guys, with bonus points. Like I talked about, Nick Lee, Aaron Brooks, 
Roman Bravo Young. Those guys are distancing themselves. And sometimes all it takes is a couple of national finalists to get some points on the board. The new talent is the real question with Sirachi Beard and Joe Lee. But I think the ultimate thing is it's too early to tell just how good they are. Are they good? Are they a good college wrestling team this year? Are they a good Big Ten team this year? Yes, they are. Maybe not on Iowa's level, but we will find that out very, very soon. If you like this clip and are looking for more wrestling news and discussion, I recommend that you check out the full Fanco Wrestling Show podcast, which is live on this YouTube channel every single week. You can click here to subscribe to be notified of new and upcoming videos, or you can check out the Fanco Wrestling Show on your favorite podcasting platform to listen on the go. Stop stalling and start listening today.